Welcome dear dentists and dental technicians. In this video I want to demonstrate the possibilities of the morphogeneric tooth design as applied on a group of teeth. You may have already seen the other short video with that one central incisor where you see several variables applied to one tooth and what was done here is that morph targets were created and the computer interpolates the changes in between those morph targets and most importantly it can combine them, it can mix them. So here the group now is activated and you see this quite well on the abrasion. I need to say that my computer is a little bit slow for this quite computation intensive calculation here so it might go a little bit slow but as I move this slider abrasion towards the right it makes all teeth more abraded. The opposite is also possible this makes more juvenile teeth so the mammalons which you see on teeth that just erupted on young patients they grow here. In average an adult patient already lost these so due to function so the zero point in the middle here is without those distinct mammalons. Another parameter is the distal roundness as I called it so the distal part of the tooth is made rounder or more flat and this is the basic principle of the whole idea let's just do it yeah so this is actually the distal edge of the tooth can be rounder let's go back it also can be more sharp and most of these morphological characteristics of teeth they are on this bipolar axis there is round flat there's long short uh, tapered not tapered and therefore these sliders represent very well how these features actually are shaped and when you do digital tooth design you use digital wax knives and round tools or maybe some software you can use lines. Usually you don't use a digital wax knife or also an analog way, your physical, your real wax knife to add a small spot around a dot. You always try to shape the tooth to give it some feature. So for example to make the ridges more prominent. So let's go to this very lowest slider, the lateral ridges. It's a good example for this. When I move it, these ridges become more prominent. So you have a design idea in your mind. You want the tooth to have more of these ridges as there are natural teeth that have prominent shoveling and others which are more round there. And this slider exactly achieves that effect without it that it's necessary that you shape that whole area. Same is too, true for the central ridge. Look here. On all teeth the central ridge becomes more prominent and by combining these you can then find the shape that you like best. Let's look at some other features for example, we have implemented here the length, which of course you can also do with other regular tools. But it was quite handy to have it in here because it's one of the most important things we change on teeth. Then we have the, we already saw the distal edge roundness, like this. Then I have designed here the distal roundness. So you see the whole distal curvature, actually it's not just the curvature, it's the volume of the tooth, gets more round or more 
flat. Let's put it back to the middle. To zero. As you see, my computer is slow, so I type it in here. The same on the mesial side. Mesial edge roundness. Usually this edge is not so round. The distal one is rounder, but we can make this also a little bit sharper. Put it back to zero. The measure roundness analog to what we saw on the distal side, make the teeth more round on the mesial side, or make them more flat on this side. The sagittal roundness. Can make the teeth more round or flat in the sagittal direction. This makes the teeth more triangular. In the other direction, they become more square. Yeah, and these are the features that are implemented right now in this prototype. This is just a prototype software built on a commercial package, which is called Modo, a company, the Foundry. It's a professional package for animation, modeling, rigging, texturing, and it uh, allows also to add functions like this. There is it's possible to add any type of feature you imagine. You could create morph targets for, from natural teeth, morph targets from teeth that you carved yourself and which are your favorite shapes. It's possible to create many other single features as I did on the single tooth, but of course this gets more complex when we add another 5 or 10 or 20 different features. Uh, you can add some special textures you take from teeth. And this technology, it's nothing new. In uh, computer generated imagery for movies, for animations, this is one of the basic ways how facial animation is done. Um, because they create these targets and then the computer calculates the interpolation. And what I didn't show yet is that now you can combine all of these. So you can make the teeth a little bit longer, give them more tapered shape, maybe the lateral ridges a little bit more prominent. Let's give them some character here. Also the central ridge, add a little bit of that. So we get this nice segmentation in the three parts. Let's make the distal a little bit more round. And as this is a more round tooth, maybe also the distal roundness, add on that. Let's make them a little bit nicer. With some minimum of mammalons. So you see, by combining these different features, you can very fast achieve a morphology or a shape that you might have in mind. Let's do another thing. Let's do a quite flat and worn triangular tooth. For that, we add a little bit of abrasion, make all the edges sharper, all the surfaces. Actually, let's put this at zero. Let's make this a little bit sharper. All 
lines of flat from this aspect here, sagittal roundness, no central ridge. And I also remove a little bit of these. Or actually, let's see, make them sharper. Yeah. So we'll reduce the mesial roundness a little bit. And by this, you get more characteristic flat teeth that maybe suit an older male patient better. Yeah, I think this is quite clear how this works. I did this a few years ago. We published this in the Journal of Computerized Dentistry. I showed this to some of the biggest cat companies. Unfortunately, None of them was as interested to um, try to implement this in their packages, which I'm a little bit, only a little bit frustrated, because I really believe that this is one of the easiest, fastest, and most intuitive ways to design tooth shapes in the computer, especially as it is so flexible, it can be expanded in any direction. Uh, as I mentioned, you can de define various things as your morph maps. Actually, to change this here is quite a lot of work. I paid a person who is a professional in this software to make the rigging and the setup. So, for example, what you see here, this is just the setup for the two centrals and then the group control we want to control this together so this is something if i would want to improve on this then it would be necessary to find now there are professionals who can do this but um, those don't work for free obviously and ideally, this as a working prototype just shows the principle and it should be hardwired, programmed into commercial package. Of course, another thing that has to be done to increase the list of variables that you want to change, this mesh here, in this case, the central, left central, it has to be duplicated and deformed so you define your 100% goal. For example here the taper this is in one direction this is in the other direction and then the computer will interpolate in between these flat curved and there are some variables that have several steps like the abrasion so that the map doesn't get too much distorted. It has to be done in different steps and then this combined. So you see here the green boxes, these are the morph maps for each tooth. One side was duplicated, those are the pink ones, it's called instances. So you can copy it from left to right, but still it's quite lot, a lot of work to design these and especially to test them in the combination so that the result always looks nice. A last thing that I didn't show you is that of course all these can be used also individually on the teeth, not only grouped. There is that group control and when I disable that and open a single tooth, then I can also go here and do the whole thing on one tooth only. This can be expanded also on uh, all other teeth, premolars and molars. And add this added to the current tools that we already have, I think it would make the digital design of teeth much easier. Thank you for following me here 
and the next thing I will try to do as soon as I have a suited patient I will see if with this setup I can make a nice design. Thank you for your attention.